Mr. the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, world leaders, G ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's an honor for me to take the floor on this uh, esplanade and this action for forest and land use. Allow me to congratulate in particular Mr. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the UK, for this initiative. I would like to congratulate also the interest um, given to the Congo Basin during this leaders' summit. Indeed, the forests in this region represent the second lung of the planet and contributes largely to the regulation of the balance um, of the world's climate. This forest, however, is exposed to the risks of deforestation. In the implementation of Paris Agreement, it is crucial to take into account the reduction of these risks, because if not, we will see a detrimental cl climate crisis. In the protection of COMIFAC, the members of the Congo Basin share the vision of a sustainable future. In this effect, they are focusing their efforts on improving the um, lifestyles of their populations. This will ensure that these people do not contribute to the degradation of forest resources. The alternate solutions that are offered are sustainable agriculture, the production of clean energy and sustainable energy, as well as the preservation of the rights of local communities and indigenous peoples. Given the importance um, of this in this region, the um, Congo is very much focused on its responsibility and wants to take on this leadership. Ladies and gentlemen, as President of the African Union, I recently launched the Green Launch Program for Africa, which aims to strengthen the measures concentrating on the viability of environment and prosperity in Africa. Um, staying um, in fidelity of this ambition, we have taken specific measures. Increase our contribution, our C uh, NDC, um, bringing it up to 21% in terms of reduction of uh, GHD, and this by 2030. We want to launch a program that looks to enhance and plant one million trees by 2023. We want to enhance our energetic mix by combining several types of energy, biomass, hydro, solar. The national strategic plan and other um, programs are based around this vision. Moreover, the protection of the rights and rights of com local communities and indigenous people is crucial. We want to take this into account in our strategy for industrialization when it comes to agricultural investments and the preservation of forests. Refocusing on uh, agro-industrial products is crucial. We want to focus also on zones that are not forests. This shows the will of our, uh, of our country to preserve forests and local communities to ensure the rights of indigenous peoples. I'm encouraging structuring investments and I look forward to seeing constructive partnerships directed towards the countries in this Congo region, which the Repu Republic of Congo represents 60% of. Ladies and gentlemen, to, uh, to close my speech, I would like to underline, aside from the urgency of the mobilization of key resources, we need to join more synergies in action and work together on all fronts. And this objective, the Re Democratic Republic of Congo approves the declaration of this summit and finds itself ready to work in partnership with other countries to be able to reach the goals that we have given ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. The President. Thank you very much for this declaration, which is not only uh, about 
industrialization and clean energy, but also the need to take into account the indigenous peoples. I would now like the president of Gabon, you could go here to the left. Mr. The President, Ali Bongo, I know that you will explain the importance of everything you've been doing in terms of the declarations of Congo to preserve forests. Thank you for being here and all the goals that you have in mind to protect your dear forests. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, my country, Gabon, is a high forest, low deforestation country. Forests cover 88% of Gabon, with 21% in protected areas. A further 60% are protected and managed in sustainable forestry concessions. The National Biodiverse Rainforest harbor two-thirds or the rate for the forest elephants, an indication both of their biological significance and, of course, their sustained efforts to reinforce natural resource governance. Since Copenhagen, where I made a strong commitment to fight climate change, our economy has absorbed just over 1 billion tons of CO2 net. Managing forests, protecting our parks, monitoring our land for illegal logging and mining activity, and fighting organized crime and terrorist groups who plunder our natural resources is not easy. It requires constant vigilance, technical know-how, logistical capacity, sustainable funding, and most importantly, courageous, dedicated, and courageable forest managers. In the absence of just one of these requirements, forests are progressively degraded and wildlife slaughtered. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the Congo Basin is the heart and lungs of the African continent. We cannot win the battle against climate change unless we keep the Congo Basin forest standing. Furthermore, our forests send rain to the Sahel and to the Ethiopian highlands, feeding the blue night and supporting agriculture in Egypt. They are critical to the stability both of the African continent and the world at large. Yet, the international community has consistently undervalued this critical ecosystem. For over the developed world has plundered our forests, extracting logs that have been the foundation for thriving industry outside the African continent. When a log leaves the African continent, we receive less than 10% of the potential value and create just 10% of the jobs at source. For every job in Africa, there are nine offshore. I see a sustainable forestry and timber processing industry as our best chance to transition from our economy. We plan to save the forest by exporting it sustainably, by ensuring it it contributes to the Gabonese economy and provides jobs for hundreds of thousands of Gabonese people. If we want our forests to survive, they must be valuable to our nation. I invite the world to come invest responsibly in Gabon's timber's economy. I urge the world to stand by our side in our efforts to protect and understand our forest ecosystems. I hope that together we can navigate the complex economy and political process underway here 
in Glasgow to fix an equitable carbon price for the net positive nations to encourage others to join our exclusive club. His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, speaking in Copenhagen in 2009, was kind enough to quote me as saying that the doors to the future are closing. IPCC tells us there is no valuable future without the tropical rainforest. It is my hope that Glasgow will mark a turning point and that together we will keep the forest standing and the door open for our children and their children. I thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, President Bongo. Les effets du réchauffement de la planète et des dérèglements climatiques qui l'accompagnent se font de plus en plus sentir avec activité dans le monde entier. Ils sont dangereux et accélèrent. La question du changement climatique, elle est évidente. Les événements climatiques sont en train de devenir de plus en plus extrêmes. Nous sommes tous vulnérables. Le climat et, et, et crée beaucoup de risques, des risques que l'on ne peut toujours pas... Gérer. Les eaux de la RDC sont vraiment polluées. La production agricole n'est plus la même qu'il y a 20 ans, 30 ans. Pollution de la qualité de l'air et la dégradation des forêts. Vous savez, le peuple pygmée vit dans la forêt. Les forêts disparaissent et ça pousse les pygmées à chercher à s'adapter à la vie sédentaire. Lorsqu'on va à Moanda, on voit qu'il y a une élévation du niveau de la mer et qui crée une érosion côtière. Au Vila, on parle tout le temps des inondations, c'est la montée du lac Tamalika. Il y a une corrélation mathématique entre la mauvaise gouvernance du pays avec les impacts du changement climatique. Nous devons savoir comment protéger la nature. Donc il y a des innovations qu'il faut absolument envisager en termes d'accès à l'eau, en termes d'accès à l'énergie et que ce soit de l'énergie propre dans le secteur agricole. Voir comment surtout mettre en place des réseaux d'information aux agriculteurs. Réduire la pauvreté et s'assurer que cette population peut s'inscrire dans une voie de développement social, économique, inclusif. La première chose à faire, c'est respecter les lois que nous mettons. Nous avions adopté. And uh, today is not just a vital win in the struggle to contain global temperature increases, though obviously it is, it's also a huge economic opportunity. And this is the long-term sustainable path to ending the loss of our forests, protecting our sacred biodiversity, and helping to keep alive the ambition of 1.5 uh, degrees by the end of the century. Uh, the, the old poem goes, Woodman, woodman, spare that tree. Touch not a single bough. In my youth it sheltered me, and I'll protect it now. And we should protect our forests, not, out of, not just out of gratitude for what they've done to protect us and in, in our youth, but for what they're going to do and to continue to do for our children and our grandchildren. And with their great green, umbrageous canopy of leaves, they will not only help us to turn the tide in the fight, against climate change, they will shelter the entire human race. Thank you all very much for what you're doing. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. And once again, for very much demonstrating the excitement that we should be feeling today, both in terms of the Glasgow Declaration in protecting forests, but also the capital shifts that we are guaranteeing for the Congo Basin and also for other forests across the globe. I would like to now invite the presidents of the United States, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Gabon to leave the stage towards the left. Thank you again, gentlemen, for your incredible leadership in the protection of forests. Thank you. You stay here with me. I'm staying with you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
never going to sit down again. Okay. <laughs> transitioning to the very important role of philanthropy, of the private sector, and of investments that need to be coupled with public sector declarations. It is abundantly clear that we must do this together, private, public sector, making the commitments, but also, as we've indicated, shifting the capital. It is there les effets du réchauffement de la planète et des dérèglements climatiques qui l'accompagnent se font de plus en plus sentir avec accès.